welcome back to Pray TV. Very glad that you're here with us again today. And today we are going to be doing something that is very different for us on this program. We really do try to essentially steer clear of the political morass that we find ourselves in so many times here in America because we know that this program goes literally around the world and there are people that are watching from many countries from afar. But it is today, the day before in America, that we are having our national elections. This is not a presidential year for those of you who do not know, um, who are from afar, but it is a time where very important decisions are being made here in America. And today we're going to share with you a portion that our pastor, Pastor Roberto Miranda, who is actually a very brilliant man, has shared yesterday following an important message that came from Andrew Beckwith from Mass Family Institute. But I'm going to read our portion of scripture that gives us our framework to begin with, and then we're going to just have a little brief prayer, and we're going to pray after Pastor Roberto shares, and we're going to drop that into this program so that you can benefit by it. The, the portion of scripture is from Psalm 119, verse 113 and 14, and this is taken from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. We're going to pray and then I'm going to share with you a little bit of this message that Pastor Miranda brought. It is so important to be able to hear. Father, we just ask that by your spirit, you'll prepare us, Lord, to be able to be discerning of heart and mind as we are going into this time of election, tomorrow being that day of elective services. And Americans across all of America will be voting. And Lord, we pray that you will give us wisdom, understanding, discernment, and that you will take us, Father, up into that new place, that new realm, that ability to be able to discern, Father, to be able to see beyond the things that we can see through the natural eye. Lord, we ask that by your Spirit, you will prepare us to be able to be carriers of your gospel into the earth at this time. Lord, prepare our souls and prepare those of us who are seeking you and seeking you daily for your wisdom, for your understanding, for your knowledge. I'm going to just read that verse of scripture one more time from Psalm 119, verse 113 and 14. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word, Lord. I hope in your word. This business of being double-minded is something that the scripture warns us about. We see the other verse of scripture that says, how long halt ye between two opinions? And that word for halt literally was to do with the lame, the halt, and the blind. It, it was like when you are halted between two opinions, you don't know which way to turn. You don't know which way to move. You don't know how to be able to react and how to be able to respond. This portion of scripture that we read from Psalm 119, it was talking about how I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. This double-mindedness in mankind is one of the deceptions that the evil one sets upon us. And it is my sincere prayer that this very important word that Pastor Miranda shared yesterday at our church, Congregation Lion of Judah, will be of benefit to you. And I ask you just to bear with it. It is a little bit lengthy, more lengthy than we normally run. But then I'm going to come back and we're going to close in prayer following this message. Thank Andrew Beckwith and the people of MFI who are here this morning. I have a couple of minutes before I finish. So let me just react as a pastor of this congregation. Sometimes when speakers 
deliver their thoughts, uh, you know, there's a moment of reaction that is allowed to someone to react on what he's saying. I, this, this week, I, I was reading uh, the New York Times, which I do religiously every day, many times a day. Sometimes I ask the Lord forgiveness because many times in the morning when I wake up, I'm inclined to read the New York Times before I even read the Bible. Because I, I'm fascinated by what I read in the New York Times. And I, I sometimes read it like an intelligence officer uh, reading or listening to the chatter of terrorists in the Internet. Um, I have the highest respect for the journalistic quality of the New York Times, and that's why I read it. I wish some of our more conservative uh, newspapers and uh, media uh, agencies would have the kind of excellence on the level of just journalism that uh, the New York Times has. But I'm fascinated by what I read in the New York Times many times, and one of the articles that I uh, read this week was on, uh, by Max Fisher, <clears throat> and the title of the article is The Weakness in Liberal Democracy That May Be Pulling It Apart. Again, I'll read the title, The Weakness in Liberal Democracy That May Be Pulling It Apart. And uh, what Max Fisher is trying to do in this article is to explain how it is that right now the world, you know, he used two examples in the beginning of his article. He uses a Brazil where um, a right, rightist uh, politician has been elected uh, president because the people of Brazil are, are desperate at the state of their nation where one uh, president after another has been indicted for corruption and they're just tired of seeing their nation destroyed by corruption and impunity. People commit all kinds of crimes while in office. They make themselves rich at the expense of the people and they're just tired. And so they elected this man, Jair Bolsonaro, uh, because they wanted to see if something would work. Now this guy is a very controversial figure and uh, people on the left and on the more liberal sides of America are seeing the election of uh, Jair uh, Bolsonaro as a kind of a scandal. How could this nation, which is such a big nation in America, in Latin America, elect this guy who is made out to be like a, you know, a big uh, boogeyman uh, who promises to bring dictatorship and authoritarianism into uh, Brazil? But then he does something interesting and he looks at uh, um, Angela Merkel in Germany, who is now saying she will not run for re-election after, I think, 13 years, something like that, as the most important figure in the European Union uh, and highly respected uh, person. And she has realized that, you know, she doesn't stand a chance anymore. She has lost the respect of many people in her own nation and her capacity to lead that nation because of what happened with the migration crisis a year or two ago, where she allowed a million migrants to come in indiscriminately into... Uh, Europe really and then try to shove you know the responsibility to different nations which said, which said hey we can't deal with this I mean, our economies are just not able to, to absorb this kind of, uh, of you know violent migration just so many people coming in and so she discredited herself amongst big sectors of uh, Germany itself which cannot be accused after the Second World War of being illiberal they are, they're a generous nation, and out of a sense of, I think, displaced or misplaced generosity, uh, Angela Merkel forced uh, this issue of uh, forced migration into Europe, and as a result, did extreme damage to her own party and to her own credibility. So this, this reporter is trying to figure out, you know, what's happening in the world? Why, why are these nations, uh, you know, choosing these uh, individuals who, who are authoritarian, almost they promise to be authoritarian in nature, um, and, and, and displacing people who are sort of more liberal and, and sort of more democratic. Now, I'm fascinated by the way he tries to, he, he manipulates language and images into explaining uh, without really recognizing what is the real reason why right now what is happening in America is also happening in Germany, it's also happening in Italy, it's also happening in Spain, it's also happening in Austria, it's also happening in Poland, it's also happening in Hungary, and many other parts of uh, Europe, but it's also happening even in the most liberal nations in the northern part of Europe, Finland and uh, Denmark and uh, all of these other nations that have been extremely liberal, that are also these groups that are saying, hey, what's ha we, we, we don't want this kind of democracy. And the reason, he, he, again, it's fascinating to see how he operates with language, images, and so on, to bring down the, the reason and to uh, make it seem like it's just the neurosis of the masses that don't want democracy to prevail 
So somehow, here in America, these tens and tens of millions of Americans who feel, hey, we've gone too far in the exercise of liberal democracy, and we need a change. My explanation is different. This is what I want to say to us, that what we're seeing in the world, whether it's in Russia or in Eastern Europe or even Western Europe, in Latin America, in many parts of the world, here in America, in England with Brexit and so on and so forth, is really the, the, the dividing of two essences. Humanity, without even realizing what it is doing, is uh, rebelling against uh, what the liberal mind, the rationalistic mind, uh, usually produces when it breaks away from God. And it produces all kinds of laws that are lacking reason and lacking human wisdom about the human uh, condition itself. And uh, people instinctively, because I, I, here in America, a lot of people who are not highly educated have reacted viscerally with their stomach, with their instincts about what is happening in America. They, most of them do not have the intellectual capacity to question what is happening with the tools and the, and the intellectual arguments that uh, what they are intuiting merits. So they, they simply react with anger, they react with uh, very basic words, but deep inside their spirit is discerning that what is happening, what has been happening in America is not good for them, it's not good for their families, it's not good for, for their economies, it's not good for the situation in their country. And they are reacting to that beyond their capacity to be able to explain it with words and with actions. Generally, intellectuals are so much more able to express their viewpoints and to shut down the arguments of the uneducated but often the uneducated are wiser than the educated who have been trained just with the sheer reason. Reason by itself is not enough. Reason needs to be illuminated with common sense, with prudence, and of course with the spirit of God. I have learned with all my, my academic training to respect the people of the soil, the people of the earth, the uneducated. Often they have much more sense than the intellectuals do. I think what is happening in the world is not that we are, that the people are rejecting democracy in favor of authoritarianism because some sort of misplaced instinct. It is simply that uh, there's something else happening in the at the level of the world right now. Forces of light and forces of darkness are defining themselves and separating. What has existed as a kind of undefined uh, middle is now defining itself more clearly on, in two extremes. And we have to choose. God is doing something right now. God is up to something, and, and Satan is up to something in human history, in the human realm as a whole, right now. And we ourselves, who are participants of this drama, don't even know. We know part of it only. But this goes beyond uh, you and I. It goes beyond Donald Trump or Angela Merkel or Joe Biden or whoever. They themselves are simply uh, tools of something that is beyond. This is a drama in this time of definition in human history. That's why, you, to me, Donald Trump is not as important as, as, as uh, the principles behind him. And what he himself is espousing despite himself, because he's no saint of me, of my, my uh, you know, uh, uh, system of morality. I know who he is. And by the grace of God, I hope that God is doing something to change his outlook, and his life. But I know who he is. But somehow he seems to be on the right side of some things. And I'm not here talking about him. All that I'm saying is that as you vote uh, this, um, uh, th this election, I want you to see the drama. Discern the drama that is taking place in the world right now. Discern the drama. You know, fly beyond parties. This is not about Republican Party, Democratic Party, Donald Trump, uh, uh, whoever it is, Elizabeth Warren, whatever. This is beyond, this is beyond Vladimir Putin, beyond Angela Merkel, beyond Jair Bolsonaro. This is a drama that is unfolding in the heavenlies right now in the world. Humanity is on its way to something that we don't even discern correctly. And Christians have to learn to think now in eternal terms, in spiritual terms. We fly above uh, republicanism or democratic uh, ideals. We are attentive to what, what is God doing in the world right now? What system do we want for our children, for the church? Right now, I prefer any time. I'm glad that we have a great economy, but I would a thousand times prefer to eat bread and water every day and have a nation that fears God and that honors him. 
Economy is not a matter to me. Finances don't matter to me right now. Thank God that we have a good economy. But we have to go beyond these things into the other realm. And I tell you that God is up to something and Satan is up to something in the 21st century. And we have to look with eyes that are biblically trained and with a filter that is biblical. Please go beyond, uh, you know, your party. Go beyond your race. Go beyond your nationality. When I stand here, I'm not a Latino. I am a God-fearing individual. And I see through the eyes of God, of Christ. I'm not black. I'm not white. I'm not Dominican. I am a creature of God. And I'm trying to discern God's will. And I will function according to God's will no matter what it costs. I ask you to do, the same, to do the same. That's all you have to do. Pray, discern God's will, discern what is happening at the level of the world. And then align with God's design. Align with God's voice in the world. And you will be okay. You will be safe. I don't need to insist, vote this, vote that. Vote for a system that is godly. And, I, and no man is able to install that system, by the way. No man, no party will be able to do that. All parties are unjust. They are radically, structurally unjust and sinful. But we have to do something. We have to vote somewhere. and you ha We have to align ourselves. And we can't use semantics either. If, if, the, if this nation is not aligned spiritually and righteously, biblically, with God's values, no matter how much we try to instill and install justice, it will not happen. Just as it hasn't happened until now, it will not happen. Why? Because the universe is ruled by spiritual values. Spirit always trumps matter. If you align with spirit, matter will follow. And if you vote for God's will... It doesn't, it doesn't matter what man, God will align reality with the will of the people that are voting for him and for his values. So align with the spirit. That's where it lies because everything else will align with the spirit. If this nation follows the will of God, honors God at the level of its government and, you know, just exalts God judicially, politically, publicly, governmentally, just exalt the creator, exalt Christ, exalt the values of the kingdom. God will have mercy on this nation. He will take down kings. He will put new kings, whatever. He will do it. So that's what we have to do. Let's align ourselves with the Lord and he will take care of the rest. I am so grateful to be under the mantle of Dr. Roberto Miranda and to be one of the people in his congregation. And we see the wisdom that God has endued upon this man over and over again. I just pray that as he has taken us up to that 30,000 foot level to give us an overview and an understanding of the things that are going on, that God will empower us and empower you to have more clarity. Because I'm going to read that portion of scripture one more time from Psalm 119 verses 113 and 114. Because... It is a tool of the enemy to keep us in that double-minded state. And it says, I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. Why do we love the law of the Lord? Because the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, Psalms tells us. The law of the Lord is something beautiful. It gives us this sanctuary. You are my hiding place and my shield. And it goes on and it says, I hope in your word. We can hope in the word of God. We can stand firm in him. We are believing that God is going to guide you as you make your decisions and you go to the polls tomorrow. And as you cast your ballots, please, we're not telling anybody how to vote but we are asking you to be wise and discerning and seeking the spirit of the living god as you make your decisions and as you by voting shape the democracy that we live in i pray that god will bless you i pray that god's peace will be upon you i pray that the presence of the lord will visit you again this very day. 
Amen and amen.